You didn't ask for it, but I enjoyed making the first one, so here's the next top 15 favorite superheroes. Number 15, Rogue. Remember when I said I wasn't really a big X-Men person? Well, Rogue is one of those exceptions, similar to Wolverine and someone who you'll see on this list later. But it actually has nothing to do with the comics. Now to be fair, it's not because the version of her I like doesn't exist in the comics, it's just that I've never read one of the comics where that version of her exists. And what version of her am I talking about? I've said it before and I will say it again, while I may not be a huge X-Men buff, this cartoon was awesome. And Rogue was my favorite part of it. This version of Rogue isn't all angsty and depressed all the time like the other versions. She's just about always smiling, and it wasn't some fake smile. She's in this horrible life situation, but she's also genuinely happy to be alive and to help and to be part of something as great as the X-Men. She represented this idea that no matter how bad things may get, there's always something to smile about. So smile. My, my! Don't y'all look serious. And we've got company, too. What's up? Number 14, The Martian Manhunter. The Martian Manhunter I'm familiar with is the oldest, most experienced member of the Justice League and the sole survivor of the Martian race. In fact, the version I'm most familiar with is actually responsible for ending the war that tore his world asunder. Now Earth is his new home, and he will protect it to his dying breath. But the thing that makes Jean so likable is that for all his sage-like wisdom, he still has flaws. He still sometimes gets overwhelmed by the gravity of what happened to him. It's almost like he's a superhero who has post-traumatic stress disorder. He isn't so wise that it makes him infallible, but having that generally applicable wisdom around when in a room filled with clashing ideals is a great touch. What am I fighting for? Who am I fighting for? Number 13, Scarlet Witch. Wanda is interesting. I can easily say that she's one of my favorite Avengers and that will pretty much never change. However, there is an element of her character that I am entirely content to ignore. She's a mutant, and she's Magneto's daughter at that. Now, in fairness, that can make for some pretty awesome stories. The circumstances of her first joining the Avengers make that apparent. But ever since then, that element has been left almost completely alone where I've been concerned, and I couldn't care less. In fact, I say that was for the better. Lingering too long on that whole thing would have been unnecessary, and bringing it back up as some sort of major storyline is what brought us the stupidity of turning her evil just because screw continuity. For that reason, Scarlet Witch has been dead to me since Kurt Busiek and George Perez's run on the Avengers ended. Anything after that is no longer worth my attention. Wanda is a cool character to have around. Powerful, but sweet, considerate, and a bit reserved due to circumstance. She wants to be the good guy and prove that mutants are nothing to fear, and, save her stupidity in writing her over the last couple decades, I think she's actually done more for that goal than the X-Men ever have, not just because she's doing good, but because she's counted among Earth's mightiest heroes, most of which are human. She isn't isolating herself from humankind, and that's a major step in the right direction. It's one thing to defend ourselves. It's another to attack our own people. Number 12, Kitty Pride, aka Shadowcat. 
I'll be honest, she's one of those characters I like just because I do. She's just likable. She's a teenager with the mindset of an adult. Her interactions with Wolverine are always a delight, too. She almost treats him like she's his mother. She's a sassy, fun character. Period. And while I am pretty sure I'm an odd one out in this, I actually wasn't very fond of her interpretation in the films. She didn't seem to have the same quirkiness to her, and there wasn't really much character there aside from the Kid with Mutant Powers number 3. I like that she was shown as being resourceful and clever, but I think there's more to her than that. And they completely missed the ball in X-Men Evolution, making her the stereotypical teenage girl character with fashion and boys constantly on the mind. If you want to know what I think is the closest she's ever come to a successful adaptation, then I'd have to give it to the Wolverine in the X-Men cartoon, in which she was just a teenager, but had that endearing nature that I liked from the comics. So go help Hank with the search. Glad to. Resume program. Go! Number 11, Aquaman. Alright, it's time to cut the mutants and dive down under, because we're checking in with the King of the Sea. No, not Namor. Aquaman gets a ridiculously bad rap, but he really doesn't deserve it. This whole thing can be traced back to a kid's cartoon. Aquaman's quote-unquote uselessness was further joked about in the likes of Family Guy and other major comedy outlets, sealing his place in the abyss. But in truth, Aquaman is super strong. He is nearly invulnerable. He can control all marine life, including fantastical sea creatures that can walk on land. He can control water. He can summon thunderstorms. He is in possession of Neptune's trident and is the legally recognized king of 70% of the planet. Don't mess with Aquaman. Aquaman is like a tale of Arthurian legend told in the fantastical setting of Atlantis. But more than that, he's also a noted member of the Justice League, who has been in almost every rendition of the team since its inception, and not as a writer obligation. Heck, if not for Aquaman, the Justice League would probably not have gotten together in the first place. That's right, eat it, Martian Manhunter. You may be awesome, but Aquaman is the king. Careful, Aquaman. They're stronger than you are. That remains to be seen. Want to join our finest fan base? Well, that's easy. All you have to do is subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitter, like on Facebook, or support on Patreon. Just follow any of the links in the description or the credits. Publishers, beware.